This is the ninth in my series on a visit to the Wadsworth Athenaeum. This post includes more American works of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. If you go to my webpage, you'll see the introduction to this series, and there's a link for seeing all of the blog posts in the series. This particular work is George Innes's Autumn Gold, 1888. Innes favored diffused light and soft colors in sharp contrast to the painters of the Hudson River School. This one has an autumn mood that makes me feel like curling up with a mug of hot chocolate somewhere. Shinnecock, on the south fork of Long Island, was attracting wealthy visitors from New York City long before the Hamptons became the summer home of the rich and famous. William Merritt Chase, a well-known contemporary of John Singer Sargent, was director of the Shinnecock Hills Summer School of Art. In this oil sketch, Chase cleverly uses the beige canvas to represent sand. The note at the lower left says, Sketch made to illustrate one way to begin a study. Next up, some ceramic tiles. They're about 5 by 5 inches each. Arthur Wesley Dow, 1857 to 1922, was so struck by Japanese art in the Museum of Fine Arts, Boston, that he began teaching courses on Japanese composition, color, and light to his students. Among them was Georgia O'Keeffe. Neighboring arts and crafts potteries adopted many of Dow's designs for tiles such as the one at the upper left. The turtle tile only made the cut because it makes me realize how much better marsh scene is. On the other hand, the two on the bottom are by the same artist who did the turtle tile, and they're quite lovely. Without their frames, though, they'd feel much less what? Important? Monumental? Oh, I know. A frame says, even, or perhaps especially, for a small work, pay attention, this is a work of art. Next up, Paul Manship, Flight of Night, 1916. Manship, 1885 to 1966, created wonderfully stylized, elegant figures, most famously the Prometheus at Rockefeller Center. For the many, many other works by Manship on display in New York City, see the list at the end of my Prometheus post. And last for this week, a work by Stanton MacDonald Wright, American Synchromy No. 1, Green, Male Torso, 1919. MacDonald Wright, 1890-1973, studied in Paris, where he met Morgan Russell, the two of them shared an interest in painting form created by color alone without outlines, a style that they called synchronism with color. I am not fond of the sort of art that requires theoretical explanations and comes with arcane titles like American Synchromy No. 1 Green Male Torso. But as compared to MacDonald Wright's other works, this one suggests that the artist knows anatomy and is trying to convey an emotional state via physical action. Just a side note, Willard Huntington Wright, who was brother of Stanton MacDonald Wright, wrote the Philo Vance detective novels under the pseudonym S.S. Van Dyne. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on your screen, or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on dianedrantywriter.com. Thank you, as always, for listening.